All right, boys, buckle up. <clears throat> I'm just kidding. We don't have to buckle up. I'm parked. All right, so today's topic, we're doing a part two to um, bad friends. Basically having to cut friends off and sometimes even family. It's shitty, but it happens. Uh, the last video I posted was basically about me having to cut off a uh, best friend. Um, I'll, I'll go over that a little bit if you're new here. Welcome, okay? Hopefully... You're probably going to relate to this. So I'm going to use a bunch of your guys' stories from the last uh, video I did. Unfortunately, I had to take it down because that friend that I had cut off, um, basically, I didn't want him seeing it because he's a psychopath, and I don't want to have to deal with him. So anyways, we'll get started here. Uh, basically, according to this guy, better call George, this is important. It's going to set the tone for the video, and then we'll get into some stories and some stories of mine. I've been reflecting lately on all the friends I've had to cut off. Um, you know, nice guys finish last, that type of stuff. Um, so this one's from George. He uh, better call George. He's got a YouTube channel. Pretty cool cat. He goes, this is classic. You are dealing with a person who has a mental disorder called narcissism. If you are going to continue to react, he will be in your life forever. The best way to destroy them is the silent treatment and not reacting. Narcissist is a person who never grew up. It's just like a child. He blames everybody else for his problems but himself. Um, he goes, let me guess. He grew up in a single mother household. He will be back, Jack. Don't reply to him. Uh, so on and so forth. And uh, I think a narcissist is just someone who thinks the world revolves around themselves. But uh, this, but this, all these people have something in common. And um, I'm noticing that usually it's drugs or alcohol. So to give you a little context here, I'll kind of briefly go over the last video. Um, so he's a best friend, long time. It, so I've known this guy 20 years, right? Uh, I'm, I'm 34. Uh, I'm, I'm ageless, okay? It doesn't matter my age. Point is, I've known him a long time. So I've helped this guy out a bunch. I let him live with me. He was a al classic alcoholic. Um, technically, he grew up in a very messed up ha uh, household. Dad died early. Mom was nuts. So, yeah, he is right about the mother and the father situation. That's for sure. Um, but basically, what happened was, is he ended up trying to fight me one night when he got drunk at my own house. And, um, you know, the cops got involved. And he was trying to fight me. And I got arrested. I know. Classic, right? So... A year or two goes by, what does he do? He weasels his way back into my life. And he kind of blamed it on me for the whole situation. And, you know, some years go by, you kind of let everything go. You're like, ah, he's basically family. I'll bring him back. Next thing you know, I take him into my house again. I let him live with me. And that did not work out. And the moment you tell somebody no and you're not going to help them, now it's, it's your fault. It's you. AKA me. But this one sent in by a dude named Daniel. Uh, video struck a chord with him, and I thought this one was rich. But um, uh, I saw your video today. That was wild. I've had my experiences too, renting to friends, renting rooms to friends, and unbelievable what I did for some friends. And the family looked at me, the mother looked at me like, oh, there's no help in this guy. And I, I tried to help him, and I ended up having to put his stuff out in the back of my pickup truck. And I said, I changed the locks. You don't live here anymore. Oh, continuing on. Yeah, so I got that guy a job, and he ended up dropping some expensive equipment, breaking that. He ended up losing that job. Then later, oh, I even bought this guy. You wouldn't believe this. It goes on. I bought him a car, and I said, just make sure you get insurance. He never got the insurance. It was a cheap car, but I'm not going to buy a nice car for a guy. Just It's just enough to get his life. He bought the guy a car. Hold on. Life back in order. He never got the insurance. I had to pull the car from him, too. Unbelievable. He never. These people, these friends from our past, you know, he was a skater friend. You know, maybe that was the same situation with you. But just because, you know, that video you did today just rang true with me so i got that guy a car he got another job after he lost the first job i got him and i'm gonna summarize this one up so basically dude wanted to help his his childhood 
best friend out, right? And I can relate to this guy because I've helped out so many people in my life. Now, here's the kicker. So he loses two jobs, doesn't pay for the car insurance, and then the guy living with him tries to steal from his friend. Yeah. And then lied about his job, and really he was just going to the bar every day and stealing money from this dude here. How classic is that? And the funniest part about this is I thought I was the only um, uh, Oprah-type guy in the world because I bought in two people cars in my life. First person, down on his luck, very talented individual. Of course, he was on drugs, classic, alcohol. But he was a very smart IT website designer guy. Um, so I bought him a $2,500 Cadillac that was a little beat up, but the engine was great. I drive it to him in another state from where I live. Give him the car. Guess what he fucking says to me? Guess. He goes, I'm not going to drive a hoopty. Yeah. Yeah. He sold that $2,500 car to the junkyard for $400. Yeah. Then the other guy, I bought a car. Oh, this is rich. Sometimes you got to cut these fucking people off. It's just hilarious. I got him a $1,000 car, changed his life. Um, of course, he's still a fucking bum. No offense if he watches this. He won't watch this. He doesn't even know I'm doing this. Um, <laughs> so get him a car. You expect him to do everything right. Months go by. He needs to borrow money. What happens? What does Jack do? Anybody in here? I borrow him fucking money. My fault. I know. Classic. So <laughs> I borrow money. I said, pay me back. He never pays me back. It's been over a year. He's going on trips to New York. 30-year-old man, still lives with his mom, no job, EBT, taking vacations everywhere. Dude's coming to visit, not me, but he's coming to visit where I live. Hits me up the other day like, bro, I'm gonna be in town, let's hang out. I'm like, dog, I'm not hanging out with you till you give me my money. Fucking nutcase. Anyways, this one was rich. And this is where family gets involved here. This one's from a guy. He hit me up and he goes, <clears throat> He goes, uh, him and his brother, his brother's taking advantage of him, and he has a lot of disability, so he gets disability money, like cerebral palsy. He's got, like, a lot of bad things wrong with him, and he's just such a nice guy, and he wants to help his brother, help his family the best he can, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> makes sense to me, probably most to you. He goes, uh, I don't know where to start. I recently gave my brother $100, and he helped me to ask him again what the bill he couldn't pay for, And but here's the problem. He goes, he, right now he's on a huge coke bender and he keeps, he's doing the classic thing where he's just using his brother for money. Who's disabled, might I add you, like severely disabled and just keeps hitting him. And this is not the first time. This guy's messaged me a bunch about this, about his brother. And he asked me what to do. And he goes, he goes, I feel I need to pull him out of the situation by holding his hand and leading him in the right direction. And I said, bro, the best thing you can do is cut this guy off from money, for sure. It's your brother. A little difficult to just cut off family. I understand that. But, bro, don't be afraid to say no. And don't be shocked when you say no if they start freaking out on you and blaming you and saying you're an asshole. Because, um, you know, you could have $5,000 to your name and, and somebody else's perspective, you're rich. I didn't make it up. This is, this is how the world works. All right, on to the next one. Uh, this guy goes, uh, thanks for the five bucks, by the way. Uh, Halo God. <laughs> he goes, um, hey, Jack, thanks for sharing the story because it made me realize I made the correct choice about my brother. He lived in my house rent-free when his wife kicked him out. I only had a few rules. Don't leave the house a mess. Don't have animals. Don't smoke weed in the house. He broke all five rules. He goes, thank you for showing us a little glimpse into your personal life. And I feel bad. Basically, he feels bad about his decision cutting off his his friend. But but dude, this is so funny. The same guy I originally made the video about who I got who I got arrested when he tried to fight me and destroyed my property. And I let him live with me for free, by the way. Um, that's the funniest part. I told him one time when he moved back in with me years later, I was charging him 700 bucks a month in South Florida in 2023. That's a good fucking deal. Or 2022, whatever the year was. I come, I, my only rule was, is no weed in the house and don't have your girlfriend over every day. She come over like once a week. Okay. We got other people living here. 
I don't need that shit around here. When you get your life together, you can go do girlfriend stuff, right? Um, I come home one day, 35-year-old man, he's smoking a joint in the house. And I go, dude, what are you doing? He goes, you're going to love this one. He goes, he goes, I'm just trying to get my $700 a month worth, bro. I'm a grown man. I, sh I shit you not. And the funny part is, is that it's, it's what it, I, ha what am I supposed to do? Keep you, what, what are you supposed to do? Keep putting up with that? I, I thought that was rich. And, um, this guy even said, uh, thanks for the two bucks from this guy. But like getting down to when you think about all these times and th this, this is a rich one, right? Because when you're someone who helps people like I have, you have to learn how to say no sometimes. But another time, this one was classic. You're going to love this one. Uh, I was living in California 10, year, 10 plus years ago. And when I first moved out there, I had like 30 grand in the bank. I was chilling. But um, I came up on a good deal for a lot of, a lot of weed. And uh, I was like, oh, shit, you know, I'll just do that. And I'll, I'll, get, I'll move this around and kind of sell this until I find a job. So uh, I had this friend who I was li we were all living together. And, um, classic dude, classic guy. I, I, you know, I lend him, I lend him weed. He goes, I'll pay you back. Uh, next thing you know, he's, he's got some money in the hole with me. About a month goes by. He's still smoking weed. Who's weed? I don't know how he's affording this. I have no idea. Um, and so one day I confront him. I'm like, yo, dude, you got that money you owe me? And he's like, dude, chill, bro. You're fucking rich. And I was like, I'm not kidding you. I was like, What? I was like, dude, I'm living on MLK and 7th Street right now. You do the math. That is not, rich people don't live on MLK, all right? Um, yeah, so it gets better. So a day or two later, he comes back in with a guitar. He's like, bro, I just got this guitar for, you know, probably 100, 150 bucks. And I'm like, dog, you just went out and bought a guitar. And you owe me money. You're just spitting in my face at the moment. But in his mind, they think you're rich. It's like the classic thing when people borrow something from their parents and then they don't pay them back. It's like, you don't need it. It's not the point. It's You get what you give. And a lot of people out here ain't giving shit. So I just thought that was hilarious. And when I made this video the last time, I just couldn't believe how many people deal with this. Um, and it gets better. Hold on. Get ready for this one. So the same guy with the guitar, right? Still owes me money. So one night I'm at work. It's bartending late night. He's calling me. He's blowing up my phone. And I don't answer. Next thing you know, my best friend who lived at the house with me calls me. And now he's blowing up my phone. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? So I step out. I answer the call. My best friend was like, yo, did you tell... Let's just call him Ricky. Go, did, you did you tell Ricky he could go in your bedroom and get and get weed? And I was like... No, I was like that. Mof that dude still owes me money. What do you mean? What are you, what are you smoking? Are you stealing my shit too? So this guy, the audacity, owes me money, spits in my face, and then tries to steal from me. I know. And here I am at the ripe age of thirty-four, and I still have yet. I'm still learning this lesson the hard way. I'm gonna vent one last thing. You'll probably, I'm sure, some a lot of you will relate because. When I took that video down, there's so many of you in there that are like, I've dealt with this. Or, or some of you were like, I was that person who was using and abusing people. So right now, I'm still learning this. I'm basically holding my best friend's hand right now. I'm holding his fucking hand. Somebody said in the comments, you can't help somebody who isn't willing to help themselves. And that's something I've really come to, to come to conclusion with uh, in my own life. Because right now, and, uh, so all I'm going to say is, is I'm not saying don't help anyone out. Give them the time. But there comes a point in all of our lives where <laughs> we can't do anymore. There's nothing else we can do. And it sucks, especially when it's family. It fucking sucks. But when it comes to friends, especially like long-term childhood friends, you either grow together or you grow apart. <sighs> Who would have thought? And that's just something I've had to accept. And whether it's narcissism, whatever that may be, I'm not sure exactly what to call it. But, um, you know, to anybody who needed to hear this, 
you gotta, you gotta, we gotta learn how to say no, man. And uh, I don't want to say nice guys finish last because they don't. In the in the short term they do, but in the long term, um, we we always usually win. But it is important that we realize how to only be so nice. Sometimes we gotta learn, bring out our inner asshole sometimes, and uh, you know, call bullshit when it's appropriate. <clears throat> Anyways, go ahead, feel free, bitch down in the comments. Uh, shout out to all my Patreon members. I love you guys. I'm starting to sweat my dick off in here. I got the car turned off. God, hell of a talk. And uh, yeah, God, good times. It's rich.